If you're wanting to use a drone for your business, and journalism is defined as a business here, uh, you have to be a 107 certified pilot. So if you've if you bought one just for yourself, you want to just fly it around your yard. You're not going to sell pictures. You're not going to. You're not on the clock getting paid. Flight is not a part of your job. Then now nah, you're fine. You're good. You can go fly. Uh, the moment you're on the clock for an organization, nonprofit, for profit, doesn't matter. Uh, you have to become a, a commercial drone pilot at that point. So yeah, you have to take that 107 test. It's a lot of very specific knowledge that once you pound it in your head, you'll be fine. It's a 60 question multiple choice test. So it's not like there's no essay questions or anything like that. Just straightforward multiple choice. With, with 107, it's really simple. Who's in charge is always gonna be the pilot in command. Whoever has the controls of the sticks, whoever is declared the pilot in command, they're responsible for everything. The way I try to explain it to people is when you are a pilot of an aircraft, you are responsible. You're responsible for the safety of everybody in the air and the safety of everybody on the ground underneath you. And it's an awesome responsibility to have. So you've got to take it seriously. You've got to be dialed in and doing your job. If you're within five miles of a decently appointed airport, you're in restricted airspace and you have to apply for permission to fly in that. Now the FAA has gradations of restriction around these uh, starting from class E, which is generally an untowered airport, but has some equipment there to help manned aircraft pilots. There's class D, which does have an operating control tower sometime. There's class C, which is sort of your smaller regional airports. Your, you know, so Omaha is a class C, Lincoln is class C. Um, Air St. Pete Tam, or Clearwater uh, is a class C air, airspace. Not a, not a transit hub. There's not a lot of flights, change, not a lot of people changing planes there. Those are generally class C airports. The really big airports, the really busy ones that you always have to change planes in. Your O'Hare's, your Atlanta's, uh, your Minneapolis, Denver, LAX, SFO, all of those different places. Those are class B airspaces. Those are the busiest airspaces. They're the highest level of restriction. For manned pilots, it's pretty substantial to get in there and fly around. Um, for drone pilots, it's within five miles. If you're within five miles of that airport, you've really got to be on your game and you've got to get a lot of permissions from the FAA and they're going to take a lot of extra time to review those because the airspace is so busy. It limits us pretty substantially. But if you look at an airspace map and you can begin to sort of filter out all of the things that are there for manned pilots, you realize there's an awful lot of space in the country that we can fly. Um, it's just, it so happens that within five miles of airports tends to be pretty busy news places. So we're sort of bristling at that. Now, all of that said, the FAA is moving toward an on-demand permission system. It will most likely be smartphone based where you'll pull your smartphone out wherever you are. You'll fill in some information. You'll apply for that airspace and pretty much instantaneously they'll turn around and tell you, yep, you can fly there or no, you cannot. Or you can fly here, but only to 200 feet above the ground or 100 feet above the ground and off you go, you're ready to go. That would be ideal, but that's not where we are yet. We are currently limited to 400 feet generally, unless you're shooting something taller than 400 feet. Yeah. And then you have 400 more feet, right? Yep. Um, is 400 feet enough? Actually, it's too much. For most of journalism, your best shots are between 20 and 80 feet. Um, the, these cameras generally tend to be pretty wide. And so once you get up that high, you're basically looking at, a, at an aerial map of the place. And for visual communicators who want to create, you know, a dynamic image, uh, frame the shot, set things up to set tension in the frame, things like that, anything above 80 feet, even 100 feet is, is getting to the point where you're just shooting landscapes at that point. Number one concern I have is that um, under the FAA, under, under FAA regulations, the pilot in command is the sole authority on the flight. They're the ones that determine fitness for flight. They're the ones that decide if it's safe or not. And if the pilot in command says no, if the pilot in command says stop, that's it, end of story. The reason is because the FAA will go after the pilot in command. They're the ones who, ha they're, they're the ones who has the license. They're the ones the FAA has leverage over. I don't know if newsroom managers realize that their drone pilot is a pilot under federal law, that their aircraft is an aircraft under federal law, and therefore the pilot has the last call on this. 
So if a, you know, a news director or a city editor or somebody like that is, is back in the office and they want their damn drone shot and they're screaming in the phone for it and the pilot in command takes a look at it and says, no, that's the end. It has to stop right there. I have never seen a tool that can add context and perspective to a news story that's any better than a drone. It's no different than a, than a smartphone on the ground. It's no different than you know, live video on Facebook. It's just another way to tell a story and the, it has to be right. Honestly, I'm worried that when, and we're starting to see this now with newsrooms buying these, that everybody's gonna have a new hammer and suddenly everything's gonna be a nail and every community festival, ribbon cutting, you know, 5K road race uh, is gonna have a drone shot and they're gonna become part of the furniture and we're not, this is gonna be visual cliches that we're not even gonna see anymore and that really wrecks it. Uh, it, it. It takes away the power of these things. But I almost sort of feel like we have to go through that. Like we have to get through this, you know, everything's a nail stage to get to the other side where the real creativity kicks in and we start to realize, okay, this is a tool and we can use it in the right way.